Okay. What is up, fellow bench warmers? Welcome to your daily fantasy quick. What's up, guys? It's first day of week six. And lots of blowout games today. Lots of. Uh, uh, we had some nice ones. The Jazz Memphis game was nice. Um, but um, other than that, there was not th- nothing really memorable. Um, I'm your host, JJT, with Komish. Komish? Yes, how are you? hi, guys. Fine, fine. So, yeah, as you said, a lot of uh, blowout games for today. And really bad blowouts. <laughs> yeah. Uh, shout out to Orlando for. In Houston, Houston. <laughs> Well, Houston was not as bad as uh, Orlando, but the players were pretty bad. Like uh, the starting five, no yes. one really scored in double figures. Um, yes, and I think that- it was what uh, KJ Martin who scored the most. Uh, Armani Armani Brooks scored the most with five threes. I, that's why I put both of the teams in the worry list yeah. because the. This is a problem with Houston. This is a problem with Houston because if they're going to be blown out, of course, they've been competitive here and there, but they've been blown out in a lot of their games. Same with Detroit, although Detroit's been better lately. And Orlando is usually better than this, but Houston is the team that's really always been blown out. Yeah. And the, the key there is, uh, I guess, Christian Wood. He's the number one, uh, I guess, the best fantasy option in Houston, right? The yeah. only early rounder. I think second or third rounder. I mean, not second, third or fourth rounder. Uh, I don't know how to deal with him going forward. There are lots of deals flying around room about Wood being traded in the fantasy world, not in real life. And uh, I just don't want to anything to do with him usually. So if you ask us, I don't know if Jeremy agrees. If you're gonna get Wood, better make sure yeah, that wait. you know. Better make sure that it's for let's say a Wendell Carter. Or a Daniel Gafford or something at that level, then I would I would I would go for that. But some uh, like Brandon Ingram or the other higher level players. I think the the I mean for Christian Wood, um, the day he complained about getting more shots, uh, I think was already a red flag. Yeah, um, a player like Christian Wood, who is supposedly the number one guy in Houston. Right, he's supposedly that guy. Should not be complaining mm-hmm. about shots publicly, and I just feel you know it's a bit uh, more of immaturity. Young, very young players, uh, no leadership yet within the Houston side, right? But Wood is twenty six, turning I think twenty seven already. So I don't think he's really young. Young, he should be the leader True. of this. This group, and I guess I don't know. Uh, is there something maybe also the fact that Jalen Green has not really been that yeah. impressive? I yeah. mean, I, I know he's talented, but for a Houston team, uh, was Jalen Green the right pick? I don't know. I, I don't know. Uh, it could be one of another uh, another thing that that's ailing them. Maybe if they got somebody who's more seasoned or probably like Scotty Barnes maybe or other players could have been better for them and uh, fantasy wise I'm getting near my boiling point with Jalen Green um, well, he I'm was not dropped. dropping him he was dropped, he was dropped? in uh, I think in our invitationals wasn't it Jalen Suggs no Suggs has been picked up I think already but the Jalen Green if not the invitation I think he was dropped already just today, just today. Uh, it's not today, yesterday. Okay, so so it it the invitation also is made up of a lot of you know experienced fantasy managers. So when they drop players there, I do understand that maybe I'm I, I we're we're at we're aligned. I'm also near near my boiling point to Jalen Green. I'm not yet at a drop point, but if you're gonna drop him, I'm not gonna blame him. I'm not gonna blame. I'm gonna I'm not gonna say it's a bad move at this point. Uh, usually, I want one more, two more weeks, but I haven't seen what else he can really do aside from three Score. set points. Yeah. Yes. And then the field goal, I think, will be up and down the whole season. So, 
really, really bad all around for Houston. Uh, speaking of Houston and um, rookies there, I got my first share of Alperen Sengun, also in yeah. the Invitationals. And got injured today, just for you. Really? <laughs> didn't you see the didn't you see the video? Although he came back, he played, he played. But it he the played. neck was the stats were nice. Today. The neck the, the the snapping of the neck was scary. So I don't know. I don't know if you know there's anything there. It, it's in our FBW uh, one of the no, I haven't one of the but one of the trends. I was one of focusing the so much on on uh, thinking if I should pick him up, and there was no notes on him. So no, no notes, no notes. Right. So, but 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 it's a good move. Uh, I don't think it's serious. It's just probably one of those. You know, uh, it was a very fluke injury, and he played through it. If ever he's gonna have to miss time, time and he's young. He's be, young. I mean, it's not gonna be a long, a, a long kind of injury. So, so he's okay. I, I think uh, Jeremy uh, alluded to having his first Sengun because he was dropped. Yeah. Right. And I was so, first in the waiver. I'm not sure if mm-hmm. a lot of managers uh, fell in line. Fall. Uh, you could see that actually. Yeah, but I, I, I barely looked into the desktop. Uh, page yeah. or the website but yeah um, yeah we'll see I mean I'm 10th there but not too far off from the 8th spot I think I'm just uh, one and a half teams away so we'll see if I can hold it together I mean the, the invitation is really close and um, yeah one big loss or one big win can just catapult you to the somewhere in the top and one yes, big loss yes. could just drop you to 14th or the last place like I'm 10th but I'm just what? Uh, I think I'm just five games behind the top spot, right? So it's not as far or as lopsided in terms of the standings. Everyone but, still has a chance at this point. But blowouts like what happened today would be good for Sengun. Yeah. Because um, like today, he got uh, much more minutes than, than, <laughs> than he would have gotten. And also KJ Martin, one of our buy players, uh, he also got a lot of minutes. As you said, he was one of the double-figure scorers. Yes. He had 22-21. Uh, rest of the season, I saw one of the questions there in the FBW uh, locker room thread that was KJ Martin or Hamido Diallo. Uh, I'll answer it here. It's KJ Martin for me. Uh, I feel like he could be the one who will be starting for Daniel Pace eventually. Yeah. Uh, looks like that, that, that could be the case. So, yeah, KJ Martin, Armoni Brooks, five threes today. Somebody to monitor also. Somebody to monitor Brooks. until the um, fantasy playoffs. Yes. These yes. are these are players who last year were really valuable in fantasy playoffs. Uh, Houston yes. players, uh, KJ Martin, uh, Armani Brooks. Uh, they were and they Kyrie were the Thomas. winning picks. They were the way Kyrie picks. or Kree? Kyrie Thomas. Remember yeah, him? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so those players are players to watch. Uh, Naji Marshall from New Orleans, right? Yeah. Um, so those types of players, well, still too early to add them at this point. I think KJ, there have been some in deeper leagues, he's been added already, like in a 16 or 18 team leagues. Uh, people have I, added yeah. him. Yeah. If if in a sixteen or eighteen, if he continues to get just twenty, 15, eighteen to twenty minutes, there would be games that here or there that he could contribute. Maybe not consistent, but at that at that deep of a league already, I guess it's it's okay. It's yeah. okay. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about uh, quickly the Kings' new rotation. Well, it's not really a new rotation; it's an old rotation. Um, Shumezi Metu, zero minutes, so most likely a drop. Uh, yeah, I'm still hoping he, you know, he'll take the floor with the second unit, but no, not really. actually. I watched. I was very curious about this game, and it was the 11:30 games. So was able to watch it because it's lunch break. Uh, I was able to watch majority of it. The rotation of Alvin Gentry was basically similar to Luke Walton's rotation. Yeah. Um, the the only difference, well, well, before the early part of the rotation was Harkless starting, which is what he did today. Metu was not part of the rotation at the beginning, which is what he did today. And then I thought he would be using Alex Len exclusively because that is one of the one of the uh, question marks. Also, will he use Tristan Thompson, Alex Len, and Rishon Holmes 
at uh, as a, a three center rotation or would he just choose one? So I thought he was just gonna use Len because Len played in the second quarter, played eight or nine minutes in the second yeah. in the first half, and then in the second half he plays Tristan Thompson. So 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 I guess it's really really the same to Luke Walton. The same, the same it's rotation. The same, it's the same, but uh, I think given that it's a new system and it's just what a day after the firing, I mean, there's not much uh, practice that has gone through it. Uh, so, you know, they, I don't think they'll make major changes at this point, uh, having just one game. So maybe we'll see some subtle changes. As the season goes along, not I don't think it's gonna be big changes, but just a few adjustments here and there. Uh, Marvin, they were at least competitive today. I mean, yes, until the end, right? And the question always, is Marvin Bagley. Today he played nine to ten minutes only, but he played. He was very, very, very energetic. Yeah, he was very active. He was actually very good in that third quarter run. Uh, he had four point five rebounds all in that stretch. Somebody to look. At maybe, but not add right now. But somebody to look at. He played nine minutes overall. That's not enough. But if he gets more and more minutes, we don't know what Gentry is thinking. But if he gets to 20, 22, 15, 20, 22, then we can add at that point. But right now, he's just basically a, a spot rotation player. So, yeah. and then I heard Gentry's interview also. He was interviewed. <laughs> the interview was funny because he was kind of. The theme of the interview was he was kind of not uh, happy about Luke Walton's firing. <laughs> Basically, I guess Luke Walton brought him there, so he wa- he did not want uh, the change because I guess he feels like Luke Walton gave him the job, and he said that everything Luke Walton did was also with his input. So that might be uh, you know a way into think looking at what he's thinking. Maybe what Luke Walton is doing the rotation. It's also what he's he wants to do, except Metu. The others might be the same. Yeah. Uh so yeah, maybe not much uh changes would go around the king's side, but yeah, uh, yes. something to monitor. Of course, they've had players who've been struggling. The Aaron Fox has been struggling. Uh, one of our very players, Tyrese Halliburton, uh struggling a bit. I think he still gives you those assists, those rebounds, a few rebounds, those defensive stats, which are okay. I think the scoring is not there. Or zero. Consistent scoring. <laughs> Today, we were zero, yes. Uh, but to score consistently, I think that's the challenge with Halliburton. But the assist, I, I'm a bit, you know, I'm quite happy about the assist, at least. Uh, uh, it's tough if he's going to give you very few points. It's tough because... Uh, yeah, the steal today was just one, I think, one steal. Uh, so it, it wasn't that much. But yeah, I, I'm not that worried. If you watch the game, I'm curious to know if um, Alvin Gentry talked to him and told him to be more as a facilitator. Yeah. Because he was the one bringing the ball down and he was not looking yeah. for a shot. He was just passing the ball. And when and I, I, I the Kings uh, broadcast team was actually saying, he was open in one instance, and instead of shooting the three pointer, at the last minute he passed it inside to an open teammate. Although the open teammate was was blocked, so they were saying the whole game he's been like that. He wasn't looking to shoot; he was just looking to pass, 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 pass. Yeah. So I don't know if you know it's Alvin Gentry's design. Talk to him that you know this will be your role. So we have to look at this more closely in the next games. But I feel like. Uh, Tyrese is a little by low at this point. He, I'm sure. he had this by low opportunity early in the yes. season. Yes. Uh, then he played really well. Well, there was a stretch where in uh the Kings players played really well. Uh Halliburton included. Um and I think yeah, it could be could also be a by low, another by low opportunity. Um, yeah. But yeah, for me, I have some Halliburton stocks out there. Uh, I think I have a two or three teams with Halliburton. I, I drafted him mostly for the assists and the steals. So the scoring, I'm not really complaining that much about. Um, another one player, though, I'm complaining about uh, assist is Lonzo Ball. And he's one of our worry players as well. I mean, I don't mind him not scoring too much. But um, yeah, I mean... 
Um, the assists are really down. I mean, the assists are really down for Lonzo. Yes. Um, the thing with Chicago, even during the start of the season, four of them, of course, with Vucevic, Levine, and DeRozan, usually only three have, have good games, as in fantasy good games. Yeah. So when Vucevic went down, you would imagine that Lonzo would be more consistent because he wasn't consi- consistent even to begin with, but he had yeah. games where he had 6-3, 7-3. So averaging it out, he was top 50. But he had bad games here or there. But so far, even with Vucevic out, he's been really struggling with his shot. And as you said, with assists, it's never been there this season. Yeah, uh, has never he been had there. the dog? Never been there. And when you watch the game, he's been basically how he's been using New Orleans. Uh, right? Uh, yeah. Spotting up, bringing down the ball, then giving it to DeRozan, giving it to, to Levine. So, uh, yeah, the, the assist I don't think will be there this season. I don't, I don't think so. Which is sad because I, I picked him because of those stats. Um, that's what we thought. Yeah. That's what we thought. I mean, I, I was thinking he had a good or decent assist in New Orleans, right? I mean, not so bad, but uh, five, he, six assists maybe. I, I would think there there are at least there are games where he was really good this year. Uh, I couldn't even think of a game where he had a double figure assist, or, or maybe there was just one or two, maybe. Yeah, but does, uh, he... does he does he have no that this year? Yeah, let me correct this year is 4.5 assists. Last year, with last year was 5.7, the year before was seven. So it's going, it's going down. It's trending it's going down, down, and I yes. think his threes, the, the attempts, uh, the three point shot is going up. No, uh, actually, it's gone down this year also. Well, everything's down. I think everything's down from from last year, but uh, I still think there is some room. I, maybe you know, this is one. Of, I'm hoping this is one of those times where in they need he needs Vucevic. To open up some scoring opportunities for him as well. That's yes. that's how I keep my fingers crossed. Like, uh, of course, instead of having three guys with uh, Levine, Vucevic, and DeRozan attracting the defense, they now only have two guys attracting the defense. So that leaves him as the third guy. Um, but you know, um, when he was a rookie or a sophomore with the Lakers, he was almost a triple double threat every night. I mean, close to like a Josh Giddy, correct? Yeah. But isn't yeah, he like, yeah. his, his stat set yes. was like Josh Giddy. Uh, but and, yeah, similar, <laughs> really similar because the field goal is just bad. Now like, he's become uh, the Anthony it, Melton without the Dillon defense. Brooks. The defense is, hasn't been there as well. Yeah, yeah. He, the, the, the steals are okay. I mean, he's been 1.5, 1.7 the whole, his whole career. So he's basically, as I said, from Josh Giddy type of a player to a the Anthony Melton. Kind of stat set, which is 12 4, 12, 4 5. I mean, that's not bad, but that's, well, that's hard not, to justify a top not, 40 pick on, on him, right? It's not what we want. So, from Lonzo. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I mean, yes. So I think uh, we'll just have to uh, get, I mean, try to just try to, um, uh, you know, Get the the bad the bad games and hopefully he gets it going when Vucevic returns because Vucevic is coming back right. Yes, Soon. Vucevic is coming back. I think he's he out of quarantine already. Yeah, he was in the bench the last game already. Yeah, so, so so this just is more a of little a condition. conditioning. So hopefully yeah. that could help his game because when Vucevic was there, at least he he had decent scoring, right? In fairness uh, to Lonzo, today was a bad game for the Bulls all around. Yeah, for I mean, they everyone. were out of for, it. They were, yeah, they were out of it. Really, from the beginning, they were not there. Yeah, from maybe everyone, tired, maybe fatigue. Much. I don't know. Uh, too much injuries because Caruso was out. Of course, Pat Williams is out. Vucevic is out. So maybe those injuries also affected them. The rotation was a whack. So so maybe those things also hurt him. I, I told you, Halliburton is a buy low. Lonzo for me is also a buy low. I I will try Jordan Poole. Let's yeah. say Jordan Poole. You, you, you really like Jordan Poole in these trades, huh? Yes, yes. I will try. I, I'm looking for players that I could swap Jordan Poole with. And 
struggling players are are one of the players I can do. I can especially after use. what Jordan Poole did last year. Yes, right? yes. Uh, so yeah, like, so w- w- one of the players there is Jordan Poole, but it's getting less and less. Uh, like Tyler Hero, let's say, for Lonzo Ball. I know people will say Tyler is better, but I feel overall then Lonzo. The season, I mean the stats. Tyler yeah. is almost you know beating him in all stats except steals. So true. right, so it's not gonna as lopsided as we all think. Yeah, true. But 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 I think but when the season ends, Lonzo will be higher than Tyler Hero. Uh, I believe that. Yeah. So th- uh, those those players. So let's talk about some buy players. Uh, obviously, these are not uh, players you trade for Lonzo or Halliburton, but can maybe pick up in your waiver wire if they're still available. Matisse Tybul. Uh, we've been talking about Matisse, and today he scored. That's the best thing. 15 I mean, points. He, can, he scores 15 points, uh, three steals, and one one block today. The defensive specialist. I think he already had three steals in the or I think he had two in the first half. Uh, two steals and one block. So I was thinking he might go to four steals to, today, but he, uh, it stayed at three. Uh, but the bonus there is that he had 15 points. So and and good shooting, good field goal percentage. Caveat though, uh, Seth Curry was out, Tobias yep. was out, and B is still, still out. Still, still, I mean, not bad though. Uh, yeah, Danny Green is out. <laughs> Matisse is not known for scoring, right? So we don't yes, really expect yes. 15 points. Uh, if usually if he gets 15 points, the field goal percentages are really bad. Um, right. I don't so think he has ever gotten 15 points. <laughs> yeah. I, so, I, I, I don't so I think, think so, but... that's 15 points. Having 15 points is already a bonus for Matisse. Uh, so yeah, uh, he should shouldn't be. be he shouldn't be in the buy anymore in the next days. I hope he should be owned in more than 49 percent of leagues from now on. Yeah. Uh, the steal rate, the block rate. Uh, he's not yet even in condition. He's coming, he's fresh out of COVID, but he's still, without fail, the steals are there. Without fail, there's at least a block there, two steals there. So, so you know, he for just for that alone, he should be rostered in way, 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 way more leagues. Yeah. And I'll just add Jared Vanderbilt again. Uh, yeah. He's still yeah. not owned in, and Jeremy was even able to, I don't know if he's... No, got, I was not him. able to because I was sixth in the waiver. In, yeah, but uh, he was dropped. That again, means he was dropped. And I, I, I can't believe he was dropped, actually. I can't yes. believe this. And, you know, uh, you know who, who that manager added for Jared Vanderbilt? Corey Joseph. Ooh. Why? I was asking why did you drop Jared Vanderbilt? Because I'm I'm um, not really uh, frustrated, but uh, yeah, kind of frustrated because I didn't get Jared Vanderbilt. But I was just thinking why why was he dropped in a sixteen team, guys? In a sixteen team, it was not that, even a shallow league. That that's something else. In a sixteen team, that's not something else. That's in a twelve team. I would I would probably say maybe, but sixteen that's too much. 12 team, he should not be available also. Today, he and, had a double-double. Solid defensive yeah. stats. I mean, yeah. but, I mean, overall today, the, the Wolves were, were you know, played great. I mean, uh, almost everyone really, even Jaden McDaniels played well. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Jared Van They have been, the, the, the Wolves have been good so, the past few games. and I think they are on but, a five-game winning streak. Yeah, and Vanderbilt and Pat Bev are the catalyst of that of that search. Yeah. They started I, and then, you know. I was just talking was to perfect. uh Joseph, one of our you know listeners, Joseph Chrysostoma uh, this morning about players you never thought would be fantasy relevant. Uh because they're they've been always known for their defense without the stats, mm-hmm. right? Pat Bev, PJ Tucker, players like those, you never expected them to be very fantasy relevant, uh, but they have been and they've been good. I mean, Pat Bev has been really good this year. Joseph actually told me in that is in one league he had he has Tybul, Vanderbilt, and Beverly in that yeah. league. That was his strategy. His strategy was he loaded up on scorers, and then for the last few slots in his roster, he added this, these guys. Yeah, for that's the defensive a great. Stuff. That's a great strategy already. 
Uh, especially yeah. if you have scorers who are a uh, high field goal, you know, the percentages are really good. Mm-hmm. You can still get those percentages plus the points and maybe the threes. Yeah. And then, you know, get these guys for the steals and the blocks. And then the turnovers would somehow be lessened because these guys very rarely turns it over uh, at a high volume, right? So Jared Vanderbilt still a buy if in case he is still there. Uh, if you didn't the- get him, look for Jaden McDaniels. He's, uh, uh, in other words, the poor man. Consolation price. If you didn't get him, maybe Jaden is available. Jaden has also been playing well. Yeah. So simil- similar, similar, similar. Playing well. The only difference is, I think, in terms of consistency so far, uh, Vanderbilt has been more consistent. Uh, and the minutes has been more consistent. Yes. Yes. Because correct. Jaden's minutes have gone from seventeen at times to thirty. Right. So it's a game to game thing, unlike uh, Vanderbilt's minutes. Vanderbilt. Yeah. It's more consistent. So yeah. Uh, that's the only thing that would make you think twice about getting. Jaden, but I think in deeper leagues, you know, you could take a flyer on Jaden McDaniels already. Um, other players in our buy, Chuma Okiki, also trending up. He has been trending up uh, even before today. So we yeah. have mentioned him. Yeah, should 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 be added already. I think there are. In, he is still available in some leagues. Uh, I've seen that. Uh, so yeah, pick him up. We did we did touch this early. Uh, the first game where he just had a sort of okay game, we already said that you know he look look for him because he's starting to look better in the court. I wa- because I was able to watch that game, so I saw what he was doing. He only had I think ten points that game, but he was very confident with his shots. He just didn't get the minute, so we saw it that you know he was getting more healthy. In in other words, uh, right now fourteen team leagues. Yes, I will add Chuma, but just add Chuma. to you know. You know, get your you, your expectations as well. Uh, the ceiling of Chuma is not as high as you know you would hope for. He's not a Vanderbilt ceiling, but yeah, but he's okay. I but mean, he can contribute, uh, right? If you need the yeah, points, yeah, he's steals, okay. I think the stat set that he has is are the points, the threes, the steals, and the steals. Yes, that those are the yes. stats that he is good at. But the ceiling is not as high as Vanderbilt's. Uh, Given the minutes, yeah. All right. So who are are Danilo Gallinari playing well as well? Uh, over the past few games, uh, I think Huerta has been playing well. The past Huerta has games. been playing well. Yes. So, uh, should should not? I don't think he should be rostered. I I I don't think he should be in your waiver wire. Uh, Huerta, Gallinari, yes. deeper leagues or fourteen should be an add already. <laughs> 14, I think he there are teams that can use him already. There are teams that could use him already. So I would I would be okay with adding him for the short uh, term. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Justin Holiday. Justin Holiday is a sneaky top 100 player from you know every year. Yeah, like, you never really noticed because he's been uh, in and out of the waiver wire. But if you look at how he's been ranked, he's around top 80. Right, top ninety because of the threes and the and steals. steals. Yeah, three yes. and D guy, threes and the steals and the threes. The percentages are not bad, so that's why he's because he he seldom shoots the ball. <laughs> so yeah. and that's why that's why he's top one hundred. That's that's deceiving though because his turnovers are very low, almost zero point something. And when you and when you have that kind of turnovers, you just need one or two elite categories. You'll be vaulted all the way up to top one hundred. Yeah. but still. But still, Justin Holiday is uh, solid enough. Solid enough. It's just he's always being dropped because he would have games where he'll have like today a good game, the other day he had twenty something points, and then he'll be zero. Yeah. In the next game, yeah. so that's 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 the problem with him. So he'll he'll be dropped, and then someone will pick him up, and then he'll give you that again, and then he'll be dropped again. So so that's a cycle with, with he's, Holiday. He's he can be uh, one of the best streamers if you caught him if you pick him up at the right time. And he can also be the worst streamer <laughs> if you if you picked him up at the wrong time, right? So he is more of a roto guy. I'll just yeah. put it that way. He's more of a roto guy. Yeah. So yeah, Justin Holiday, uh, by player James Johnson and Patty Mills for the for the Nets. James Johnson has been getting some minutes as well. Um, mm-hmm. 
as a big man and he can contribute if he gets minutes. Last year, I think he was in Dallas last last year, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, he was in Dallas, Dallas last year. Every year, right. it seems like we have James Johnson at some point in our uh, buy list because yeah, he just he can, pops he, out. Yeah, and he can give you those uh, blocks, steals, yeah, right? the yeah. rebounding. So, uh, but I think at this point, still more of a deep league. Uh, deep league ad. James Johnson is a deep league ad, ad and uh, I think he could be streamed also in some games. Uh, why is he relevant suddenly? Bruce Brown, Bruce Brown is, is out, out with a hamstring. Yeah. Hamstring. Joe Harris is still out. Well, Millsap has not been. I mean, he's a washed player already. I guess the the Nets figured it out just now. So they're looking for, and then Nick Claxton is still out for three more weeks with his whatever illness he has. So uh, there are minutes now to be had in in Brooklyn, yep. and he has twenty six, I think, twenty eight minutes the past two games. So aside from Patty Mills, who we'll also put here, he's the best ad right now in in Brooklyn. Then James Johnson. Yeah. So those those are some of our buy players. Uh, anyone you want to discuss in particular that I haven't mentioned? We no, still have not, not Jeremiah either. Robinson Earl, but we've talked about him a, lo- a whole lot in our quick. Yeah, that that guy. He was dropped in. Yeah, five after a bad game. Leagues. Yeah, because yes, he had a bad game the last game. He had a double double today. He had a three again. Don't drop him. He's probably gonna be Jason Tate this year. Well, what Tate was last year. Yeah. So uh, that's not you know spectacular like you know wow, but he's gonna be. Solid for your teams. Yeah, so, so I mean, solid yeah. for your teams. For a uh, for your thirteenth guy in your roster. Yeah, right. I mean, should be good. Yes. Uh, Isaac Okoro, another player, but this guy needs the minutes to produce, and he has the minutes now. <laughs> he's always had the minutes. I think last year he's had the yes, yes. Oh, he was one of the rookies who had the most minutes last year. Um, and yeah, but he was a late bloomer last year. He performed. You know, he he was helpful. I couldn't say he performed because I don't think the numbers are as good as well, but he at least helped uh, some teams in the playoffs, especially if uh, you some guy to stream. Yes, uh, yes, that's correct. Okoro, I'm not a fan, but lately he has been giving giving better stats. Two, two steals today. Yeah. Uh, I think three or four straight games where he had multiple steals already. Of course, the shooting is not going to be there. But if he can give you steals, he can give you one or two three pointers. Well, that's that's okay for yeah. uh, for a deep league. And, and, that's okay. And Cleveland has been good. I mean, they've been yeah you know, good so far this year, and I think you know that might help his fantasy value a lot. Because so far in Cleveland, pretty much everyone who's playing, almost everyone who's playing, has some relevant value in fantasy. At some point, yeah. Kevin Love had uh, Rubio he still, still has. has. Yeah. yeah, well, he's been dropped in some leagues, but yeah, he still Kevin has. Love. Yep. Okay. I've seen him in the waiver in some leagues. Uh, pick, Rubio, him up, pick him up. Rubio has right, and uh, yeah. of course, those their starting five uh, are yes. still solid, right? So, pretty much everyone has some good value there in Cleveland. Even Dean Wade. Who's starting yep. for Mobley? Who's starting for Mobley as uh, in maybe in deeper, deeper leagues? But he has been giving trees and some other stats here and there. So Kevin Love, I just want to go back to Kevin Love. Eight points, twelve rebounds, and a block today. I guess he was dropped because Laurie Markkinen came back, Jarrett Allen came back. Yeah. But remember, uh, Evan Mobley is still out, so they're basically playing three bigs uh, all the time. Yeah, they've been playing three bigs most of the time. Yeah. Most of the time, I mean, the rotation will still. I mean, Allen American and has the rest, right? Who would who would who would relieve them? Uh, they're not playing Ed Davis. They're not playing Taco Fall anymore. So all the backup minutes would be with Kevin Love. So that, that's he's gonna take mo- a lot of Mobley's minutes. So he should be picked up. Should be picked up. Uh, all right. So those are our buy players for today. Feel good. Let's pick one here. Let's talk about Josh Giddy. Since we've talked about you know uh, rookies uh, most of the time, but Giddy is probably the one rookie we haven't talked about much. Uh, we talked about him earlier, uh, comparing him to Lonzo, um, Lonzo's first year. He's been steady, I'd say steady 
is the probably the good term. Uh, the, the stats are there, but the points are mm-hmm. not as consistent. Uh, yeah, he's, he's just they, been steady. Like you don't, they, it, they they won't wow you like, um, you know, he won't wow you like Evan Mobley. But he's not as bad as Jalen Suggs or Jalen Green. Yes, and uh, why the points are not there is because of the shooting. Mm-hmm. He, has, he has not been consistent and he's not been good shoot, shooting-wise. But lately, the past three, four games, he has been shooting better. He's been shooting about 50%. So that's the difference. Because he always gets you seven rebounds, six assists. But if it's 4.7 rebounds, six assists, it doesn't sound as nice yeah. as 14.7 rebounds and six assists. So the eight or nine additional points is because he, made, he makes three or four more shots now. But he always t- takes 10, 11, 12 shots. So, so th- that's basically that's the difference. That's why I wrote before that I don't think he's going to be a top 100 guy this year because I don't think the shooting will be to the level really of there. top 100 for him. Yeah. Yes. So, so why I, I said na, if you can maybe swap him because his name value is high, people are hyped over him. They, yeah. they feel like he has potential. He has a breakout potential for the rest of the season or whatever. You can trade him for somebody who will be, I think, more efficient and would give you more other uh, like steals, more steals maybe, more blocks or whatever. Let's throw out a name. Um, Who's a good name that you can throw out? Hmm. For Giddy, give, you want a big? Maybe. Yeah, let's <laughs> or, try or, a big. Let's try a big. Uh, I'm thinking, what, do you, what are you looking at? Like a player within the top 70? Maybe, maybe, maybe seventy or eighty. That's that's what what I'm looking at. Um, let's see, because I won't take Gafford. I won't take Gafford. The first name I I thought of and you realized no, that won't work. No, no, that won't work. I was actually thinking more of a. Uh, uh, right now, if Jonas Valanciunas really continues, it's too high. To, I know, I know, I know. Uh, I'm just saying, if he struggle, if Zion comes back. And he struggles. Uh, I, right now, he's been slowly, 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 slow, slowly. Not, not, not a great drop off, but slowly. And if Zion eventually comes back, we're not saying you have to trade Giddy now. Let's say yeah. in, in a future, if J Val, you know, or Potal, maybe Jakob Potal. Jakob Potal is more, more uh, attainable, I guess. Giddy for Potel, I guess that's closer, right? Yep, yep, yep. I mean, th- that's closer. Yep, yep. Uh, name value wise as well, uh, Potel doesn't have that good name yes, value. Yes, yes. So, so that that's a guy. Actually, I own Giddy and I own another guy. I think I can get him for Al Horford. Yeah, I was, I, I was I just looking at Al, Al Horford. Uh, yeah, I was just about to, you know, mention Al Horford if he's you would trust Al Horford more than Giddy. At this point. For this season. As long as he's healthy, I will trust Horford more than Giddy. Overall. I mean, I'm sure Giddy would get the triple doubles here and there, but the the scoring, the, the inefficiencies are just uh just a little bit of a problem. But I'm not saying you should trade Giddy. I'm saying you should be open to anything. You should be yeah. open. Let's say someone wants really Giddy so much, just squeeze the value out of him. If you can, uh, that's why I put out Gen- Jonas Valanciunas. I'm just I'm not saying you can get you can do that deal, but if eventually Valanciunas slows down to a point where he drops out of the top fifty, top sixty, Giddy won't be far off any anymore. They they might that might happen. So just wait for it. Wait for the right right deal that may come along. Do not. It's not a must trade. I'm just saying be open to possibility that he can give you somebody who will might help you. Better this year. Yeah, but and uh, Jakob Pertl is the one guy. If you want to trade him now, could be a uh, uh, you know feasible trade uh, for you yeah. guys. Uh, yes. And of course, Al Horford, you could try it out. Uh, that's Al Horford. Door is I feel is uh, on a higher tier than Jakob Pertl at this point. Yeah, at this point. Yeah, at, at this point. point. It's just that Al Horford is old. And that get you know that goes against him already in terms of uh, the value is not as high because he's already old. But if you look at the stats that Al Horford can give you, uh, they are solid across the board. I just remember the trade in our league. Max Max will be our guest, I guess, in the in this week or yeah, whatever. And Reginald is another. They they made a trade. 
GD for Netherlands Noel, but that was before the season started. But that is just a, 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 you know an example. Noel, of course, values plummeted. But before the season, he was actually he had better value. So someone like that, someone like that, someone who could give you maybe the steals and blocks that you need and use Giddy to get it. Yeah. So, so something like that, something like that, a trade like that. Okay. Uh, all right. So yeah, that wraps up our quickie for today. Uh, we still have we had a lot of feel good players. So we have Carl Anthony Towns, Harold Garland, Terry Rozier. Players not really. Um, we kind of expected somehow they're not really surprising players, but we just wanted to talk except about Rosier, I guess. Yeah, well, Rosier is starting to heat up. Uh, although I think a buy low. the Charlotte uh, core is alternating good games and yes. uh, not so good games. Like yes. there would be games where in Hayward plays well, there would be games where in Rosier plays well, there would be games where Miles Bridges was out of it and. Yes, uh, today he was out of it. So yeah. I think they just go with the hot hand, but the only constant there is Lamelo. So, so yeah, uh, that's for the Charlotte side and Terry Rozier. Anyway, that's it for our Daily Fantasy Quickie. We'll see you guys again tomorrow. Bye, guys. Bye.